Welcome Philosophy 135. It's your professor, Dr. K. I hope you all are doing well. Listen, you all are crazy enough to uh, take an eight week condensed course on the fly. I'm crazy enough to teach it. At least we got that in common, right? So what I want to do in this video is just give you a little introduction to the course, both to me as your professor and teammate in, in this endeavor, and also to the course in terms of how it's gonna flow, what the content's gonna be, basically some of the stuff that's on the syllabus. I wanna explain it a little more, give you an idea of what you're up for if you stay in this class. And I hope that you do. So first, let me tell you a little bit about myself. So when I was 18, I couldn't get out of high school quick enough. I couldn't stand it, had no interest in high school, no interest in going to college. I joined the Marine Corps and I did four years in the Marine Corps. And at the end of that, I decided hey, maybe I will try college now. And I originally wanted to be a psychologist. My first or second semester there, I kept hearing about this professor, Dr. Bauer, you gotta take a class with him. So I saw he was teaching philosophy, I thought, huh, wonder what that's about. I took it and I fell in love with philosophy. I fell in love with learning together. And I was inspired by that course and that professor to become a philosophy professor myself. It's been a long journey. I think I started college in 2002 and I was in college in one form or another up to last summer of 2021. Along the way, I picked up a master's degree in linguistics and cognitive science. I picked up a, a PhD in philosophy, where my specialty was on medieval philosophy, in particular, Augustine, and philosophy of religion. I've taught now over, I think, 40 classes in philosophy, including a bunch dealing with the topics that we're going to discuss in our course. I'm married, I got a wife and two kids, and we have a faithful Rottweiler uh, named Sonia. So I just wanted to give you a little idea about me, my demeanor, what I'm about, and to let you know that I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to go through this material with you and learn with you. I love doing this. I love talking about this topic. What greater topic is there to talk about than God, right? And you all and we all together are going to do just that. And I'm, I'm here for you. I, I want to help you uh, work through this material and think about this material. And I'm going to be doing it along with you. I like to think of our classes as a team. We're not competitors, me against you, or you guys against each other and me. We're all a team here trying to inquire into these questions to get maybe a little closer to the truth about the matters we're going to discuss than we got before. So if you're down for this journey together, you know, I'll be right there with you all, all the way. I'll be dedicated to the class and, and making you quality videos not waste your, your time, try to keep them short, but give you the information that you're going to need to do well on the tests that you're going to have and whatever tasks that you're going to have. So yeah, you know, that's it. That's Dr. K and that's what I'm about. So now I want to say a few things about the content of the course. So the first thing I want to say is read the syllabus. Read the syllabus. Read the syllabus. Read the syllabus, right? So read the syllabus, have a look at it, read it all the way through. You wanna know what the class that you're taking is about, what it's gonna require of you, that type of stuff. What I'm gonna talk about here is gonna supplement, highlight the syllabus. So you need to read the syllabus and listen to this together to get the fuller picture of what the class is gonna be about, what you can expect, so you know what you're signing up for and what you're getting into, right? You want to be informed. Read the syllabus. So let's talk a bit about the content of the course. And to do that, let's start with the good old course description in the course catalog for UNCG. This course focuses on questions in the philosophy of religion relating to the existence of God, the possibility of evil, 
objective moral truth, divine attributes, and more. This course also provides foundational skills necessary for academic success at UNCG. So in light of the standard course description, we can think of our course in the following manner. It's going to have two main parts. One part we can think of as the philosophical part. The other part, the foundational skills part. Now, as part of the foundational skills part, there's going to be two components there. There's going to be a basic critical thinking aspect. What I'm going to do is give you an introduction to logic. This is nothing to be scared of or intimidated of. We're not going to be doing big proofs or deriving proofs. What we are going to be doing in this class, however, is considering lots of arguments. And that's what you should do in any philosophy class, I would think, is I take philosophy in part to be the art of giving and evaluating arguments where your purpose is to figure out what's true and what's false. Uh, so you're going to need to know the basics about the terms of logic. And we're going we're gonna to study that for a little bit here in the first part of the class. So you have a background, you can understand and talk about arguments, have a little maybe clear understanding of how they work and how to evaluate them, how to construct them. And then there's going to be a section where you're going to watch videos from UNCG philosophy professor Jeffrey Kaplan. It's going to give you tips for success as a college student. There's 12 or so videos. Now let's turn to the philosophical part of the course. So the philosophical part of the course is going to have three main subsections. God's existence, God's nature, and God and evil. In the section on God's existence, we're going to be looking at a variety of famous arguments in the history of philosophy for the existence of God, and we'll also look at some against the existence of God. We'll look at arguments from Plato, from Aristotle, from Augustine, Boethius, Maimonides, Al-Ghazali, and even some contemporary philosophers like William Lane Craig. In the section on God's nature, we're going to look at the account of God that is offered by Anselm of Canterbury in his famous work, The Proslogion. So, as you see when you read this, Anselm is going to define God, and then from that definition of God, he's going to attempt to show that God exists, and he's also going to attempt to form or build an account of what God is like, what attributes he has. And one of the things I like about this work is that the reasoning is very tight and very clear. So in reading this work, it can also help to serve the foundational skills component of the test by exemplifying good clear thinking. In the section on God and evil, we're going to ask the question whether or not evil is a thing, is a substance that stands in opposition to God. So there was an early religious sect called the Manichaeans who thought that there was God and goodness, and then there was evil, and that these two were in a constant battle against each other, some gaining ground at one time and another gaining ground at another. Ultimately, they thought that God or goodness was going to win, win out. The point is they took evil to actually be a substance, a thing. Sometimes you see this represented in various movies like The Lord of the Ring. They have that eye with the flames out. It's supposed to represent evil. In opposition to the Manichaean view, there stands Augustine of Hippo, who's a philosopher I specialized in, and he held that there Evil is not a thing at all, right? It's not a substance. What evil is, is a lack of goodness. So everything that exists is good. And evil is just the lack of goodness in something. So we're going to look at the Manichaean dualistic position, that there's God and evil. And then we'll look at Augustine's argument that all there is, is God or goodness and evil is is a privation of that, or it's a lack of goodness. All right, so there you have it. We have our course. It's got two main parts, a philosophical part, a foundational skills part, and it's got 
five main subsections. Under the philosophical part, the subsections are God's existence, God's nature, God and evil. And under the foundational skills part, the subsections are basic critical thinking and tips for success as a college student. So that was basically the composition of the course. Now I want to talk about how we're going to move through the course, the order in which we're going to proceed, and how you're going to be evaluated. So we're going to start with basic critical thinking, then we're going to turn to God's existence, then God's nature, and then God and evil. The tips for success as a college student, the videos by Professor Kaplan, that's going to be free floating. You can watch those when you see fit throughout the semester, okay? And I want to start with basic critical thinking or intro to logic because that really is going to build, help us build a foundation in which we can clearly discuss and work through the material here, here, and here. So for evaluation, look, there's five main subsections of the course. You're going to be evaluated on each of the subsection. So there's going to be, the way I have it set up now is there's going to be a true, false, multiple choice test for each of these five subsections. Now, when it comes to basic critical thinking, section on God, existence, God's nature, and good and evil, there are designated weeks when you're going to have that test. Given that this section here, which consists in watching Professor Kaplan's YouTube videos, you can do it at your own leisure. I'm basically going to set it up on Canvas so that the test opens, say, the third week of the course, and it's going to remain open till the last week before finals. And you can do the test for that anytime between that period. But again, the test for the other four sections are going to have designated weeks. So that's pretty much it. That's the course content, composition, how we're going to move through it, how you're going to be evaluated, who I am, all that good stuff. I expect you all to be respectful and professional in our interactions, whether it is commenting on YouTube videos or commenting on other people's, on other students or people's comments. The point here is not to inflate your ego or show how smart you are, right? Or you can get one over on me or I can get one over on you. That's not what this is about. We're not trying to one up one each other and make others look stupid. We're here to support each other and work as a team to inquire, to think about and explore these topics, right? So we're a team. We're a kind of family. We're on each other's side and we're on the side of the truth, right? Trying to come to understand the truth a little more. So that's how I want you to think about the, the class and should you have a chance to interact uh, with any of our class, I expect you to be respectful and professional. That doesn't mean we can't disagree or we can't we can't have fun, but it's within the frame of goodwill towards our fellow team members and classmates. I, you know, I used to tell my my classes the first thing you do in taking a philosophy class is consider the possibility that you might be wrong, that you might not already have a perfect picture of the facts of this world. Right? So you got to consider the possibility that you might be wrong and you have to make what you're striving after, what you're searching for in the activities of this class is the truth. That's what we're after, right? And if you do that, if you make, if you consider the possibility you might be wrong and you make what you're striving for in your thinking related to this class, really everything, the truth then even if someone was to point out a flaw in your thinking, that wouldn't be something to be upset about or, oh, poor me. No, it would be something to thank them about because what you're after is the truth and they might help you realize you don't have it yet and help you get closer to it by pointing out a flaw in some of your thinking. And the last thing on that I want to say about, you know, our philosophy club is talk about Phil 135. Talk about it. Talk about it. Tell others the arguments that you're examining. Be the most annoying guy or girl at the party. But in all seriousness, talking about this stuff helps you retain it. And talking about talking, I think I've done enough of that for this video. So I'll see you in the next video.
Dr. K out.